Moin Moin and welcome to Ralph's Photo Booth. Yeah, one year I have uh, my photo booth and in this time um, I've got a lot of new cameras, some nice one and uh, some very interesting one, but um, no camera like the new one from Nikon um, produced so many discussions in the internet and so many people say wow I like this one and so many say I don't like this one very much. I'm talking about the brand new Nikon DF that's a full frame uh, DSLR camera. Um, it's based on the Nikon D4, so it has had a 16 megapixel um, sensor and um, most of the technique of the D4 is in the DF. But the DF is a retro style DSLR, so um, Nikon said we want to build a retro style DSLR um, so you can use all the old lenses, also the non R. AI lenses with the um, old uh, Aperture look. So um, yeah, that's the reason why Nikon did this. Um, and there are some people or so many people who say, wow, that's really nice, I like this. You have the, the manual dials, you can change everything manually. You don't have to go into the menu to change the most important things. And the others say, I don't want to pay so much money for a camera which is not up to date, like the Nikon D610. I have here, I show you later, I compare it a little bit with the DF so you can see the differences between both cameras. Um, so yeah, it's a very hot discussion in the internet and, and the, the photographers are discussing uh, the new DF uh, very hot. I like this very much because these, this is a way um, to, to give photography a new aspect and um, Fujifilm does it with the X-Series and uh, Olympus does it with the uh, Pan EP5. They, they both set up the retro style of cameras with, with uh, less functionality, with more manual um, things you can change. So I like this very much and it's very interesting to see how the, the manufacturers go down to the basics of photography. Just aperture, shutter speed, ISO setting and that's it. Okay, white balance, but that's it and um, you, you don't have any uh, um, scene programs on the camera like the DF. You only have, and that's what I show you now, you only have PSAM. That's it. No scene programs, nothing else. Um, you have some picture styles in the camera, but you have no um, effects on the, in the camera, like toy effect or something like that. Um, so that's really back to the basics. Um, yeah, so you have seen it, that's the DF. And um, one of the most important things of the DF, these are the, the dials on top of the camera. So um, we have here, on this side we have the uh, dial for the um, exposure compensation, you have the dial for the ISO setting, on this side you have the dial for the shutter speed and here um, under the shutter speed dial you can change single or continuous shooting, you have a silent mode and mirror up. Um, then, as I said before, you have the four different settings, manual, aperture, shutter priority and program mode and that's it. On the back side of the camera, yes, you have a control monitor, um, you have a dial here which you, where you can change the metering of the camera from uh, spot to center weighted to overall. Um, then you have the buttons uh, like you know on the other digital cameras, digital DSLRs, uh, <laughs> sorry that's uh, doubled, on the DSLRs you have the live view. Yes, the camera has a live view function, but I show you the live view function, just press, oh sorry, that's the wrong one, here we are. You have the live view function, but you don't have a video mode. So the DF is only for photographers. You don't have a video mode on the DF. You have the live view, but you don't have the video mode. And what you see here, you have a 3D level meter. That's really nice. Um, you have a 3D level meter in the camera. Um, and you have the most settings of uh, the other digital cameras, um, so they are not the big difference. I will, go, I will show you later a quick uh, uh, view of the uh, menu settings, so you will see which menu settings we have in the uh, camera. 
Going back to the buttons, we have the menu button, we have the different white balance quality um, and uh, the info button. When you press the info button, um, you get the different informations of in for the camera. Um, if you're out of the live view mode and press the info button, you see you have the different settings here down and you can change the setting just by going through the point you want to change. Press the button and then you can change the different settings of the camera. Oh, by the way, I see it's still in German, so that's a good uh, option to show you the menu. I just go to the menu, that's the menu, and now we go to the setting here, system, and let's change the language. Oh, here we are, first point on this screen, and let's change the language to English, so now we are in English. Um, Yes, let's have a look uh, on the front side of the camera. On the front side of the camera, we have a dial here. See, here is a dial. That's the dial. Usually the front dial is just over the grip of the camera, but the front dial here on the DF, yeah, it's on the body a little bit um, away from the, from the grip, but it's also good to use. And then we have here the function button one, and we have the button to close the aperture. You see how this will work. On the other side, we have the lever to change between autofocus and manual focus, and it's still a button. So if you press the button, you can make the different changes of the AF setting. So let's see how this, uh, let's show you how this will work. You have the AFS and when you turn the front dial, you change the setting of the focus field. And if you change the back dial, you change between autofocus continuous, autofocus single. And just let me give me a look. If you are in, I think auto, you have, oops, you have also the um, 3D, usually you have also the 3D um, uh, matrix metering, uh, matrix autofocus. Um, so then we have the bracketing button. Here is the bracketing button. Um, we have the, uh, the uh, flash uh, uh, to put on the flash here behind the small screw. Um, on the side of the camera, we have USB, HDMI, and the remote control behind the behind this. So here we are. So that's nothing new. Um, as you imagine, we don't have a microphone uh, jack or a headphone jack because no video. Again, the camera doesn't have um, video functions. Um, to change the setting of the program mode, just turn the dial a little bit off and then you can turn the dial. So that's very nice and very easy. So you can't accidentally um, change the program uh, mode of the camera. One nice thing, um, you have the dial here on top to change the shutter speed. Um, you, you press the button here and then you turn it to bulb function, four seconds, two seconds. You can turn the camera so it's a little bit better to see. Um, four seconds and it goes up to a, a four thousandths of a second. And one thing, if, you, if you're if you used to an icon camera um, and you're in the manual mode, like now you're in the manual mode, usually you turn the back dial and the front dial to change aperture and um, shutter speed. You can see here, if I turn the, um, the just give me a second, if you to press the button once, so you will see the on the display, you turn the front dial and you change the aperture. And if you turn the back dial, nothing happens. The reason why nothing happens is because you have the big dial to change the shutter speed. But there's an option that you can also change the shutter speed by the dial on the back side. And that's very easy. So just go to the third step, one third step. And if you go to the one third step, then you're in the mode like the other uh, DSLRs. You can change the shutter speed on the backside and the 
aperture on the front side. Now that's a very neat function. I like this one very much because sometimes it's not very useful to work with this big dial. It's much more useful to, bur to work with a, the with a dial on the back side and the dial on the front side because it's a little bit faster to change aperture and shutter speed. So I like this one very much though so you can change to to this option. Otherwise just go to the dial and here you make the setting of the shutter speed. You see it says 250, so that's the shutter speed. Um, yeah, you see there's only a small display on top of the camera. The reason is because you have so many dials, there's no more space to, to uh, build in a big, um, a big display in the um, camera. One thing you should miss, that's the button here on the side, that's a flash button. Yeah, the reason is the DF doesn't have a built-in flash. So if you want to use a flash, you have to put on an external flash. Also, to uh, remove some other flashes, um, you have to have a, a, um, an extra flash on top of the camera. It's not like the D610, where you have the small built-in flash where you can remove control um, um, the other flashes if you want to make a scene with two or three flashes in the, in the scene. Um, yeah, so let's have a short look into the menus because the um, menus, there are not so many surprises because the um, menu is manual is uh, mostly the same like um, the other um, digital uh, SLR DSLR cameras. We have the playback menu. We have the shooting menu, custom setting menu, setup menu, retouch menu, and we have the recent settings. So let's start with the uh, shooting menu. Um, you have the storage folder file name, image quality. You can change between different JPEG um, qualities, and you can go to rough, to, to raw and um, TIFF. Um, then you have the image size from large, medium to a small. 16.2 megapixel is the highest resolution. It's like the D4. Um, then you have the uh, image area DX or FX. You can uh, change automatically. So if you use a DX um, lens, the camera uh, goes automatically to the DX crop. If you have um, DX lenses, JPEG uh, compression you have here, um, then you have the different raw recordings. You can change between uh, looseless, compressed, compressed, uncompressed, and um, um, between 14 and 12 bit raw format. Um, then you have the white balance. You have the different presets of the white balance as usual. Auto, fluorescent, flash, cloudy, shade, and you have the setting in Kelvin. So you can uh, uh, choose the Kelvin value between 2500 and 10,000. So you can make a real good individual uh, white balance setting. Next is the picture control. Um, sorry, uh, next one is the picture control and that's the only setting you can make to change the picture um, in the style. You don't have the uh, scene programs and you don't have uh, special effect filters. You only have the picture control and like usual in the picture control you have standard, neutral, vivid, monochrome, portrait or landscape. And one thing I like very much again is in the monochrome setting you have the different filter effects. You can change between yellow, orange, red and green. So yeah, if you take pictures outside with a real blue sky and white clouds, you use yellow, orange or red. So the sky gets in the in the monochrome picture gets real dark and the clouds get very, very bright white. Um, and if you want to take portraits, use the green filter because the skin um, looks very um, uh, natural in the black and white picture if you um, use the green filter. It's not too dark or not too light. Um, so that's the reason why you should use the uh, green filter um, when you're taking uh, portraits. Yeah, that's very nice. I like this one very much because it's, it's, it's very useful to have. Picture, oops, sorry, just go there. Picture control, color space, sRGB or Adobe RGB. Uh, RGB, um, active delightening, HDR, vignette control, distortion control, long exposure noise reduction, high ISO noise reduction, auto ISO settings, 
um, multiple exposure and the interval timer shooting. That's real nice. You can can make an interval timer shooting start now or start later, and you can go of, of, uh, use intervals from uh, down from one second up to I don't know some hours. So that's a very nice function. I like this one very much because it's a little bit uh, of experimental, um, like flowers or stuff like that. Um, that's very nice. So let's go to the custom setting menu and in the custom setting menu um, it's a little bit smaller and uh, not so long like in the D610 because you have less functions but the most important functions are here you have the different autofocus settings um, uh, what I showed you before you can uh, use the uh, button on the side to change the different autofocus settings also you don't have to go to the menu um, you have um, the number of focus points you can change here between uh, 39 and 11 points if you go to 90, 39 points I'll show you later how this will look center widened area um, fine-tune you have the shutter release button um, standby timer, self timer, you can change between um, the different settings between 5 and uh, oh no, 2 and 20 seconds. Um, so that's a real nice function because you can say the camera after you, know, you see a uh, number of shots, you can say 5 after 5 uh, picked after 5 seconds, make 9 shots. So if you make a self timer and you want to do some special tricks in front of the camera, <laughs> that's a very nice function um, for the self timer. Um, then you have monitor um, off, you have a beep, uh, the grid, ISO display, screen tips, um, you have the different um, continuous mode shooting speeds um, you can set up. Um, information display, LCD illumination, exposure, delay mode, flash sync. You see the flash sync modes. I can show you this menu. It might be important for you if you use external flash, flash shutter speed. Uh, you can change here. And then we have the optional flash if you use external flash. Here you see and you have the setting of the different buttons, the uh, button, this one, uh, the light button, this this one here on top of the camera so you can light up the um, the display on the back side. Um, let's go to the menu and then after this one you have the OK button, the multi selector, the FN button, that's the one in front of the camera, on the front of the camera. Um, and I set this one to the viewfinder virtual horizon so you get the virtual horizon in the viewfinder when you press the button. I like this one very much. You have the setting of the AEL AFL button that's the one here on top of on the of the camera on the back side on top of the camera. Yeah so you have you have the usual options to uh, set the different buttons and uh, control dials um, as usual. Um, in the next menu, sorry, in the next menu we have the system menu and then the system menu there's only one point which is very interesting because the other points are the same like in the in the other digital cameras but there's one very important point that's the non-CPU lens data. So if you use old lenses without AE mode, um, the um, uh, old lenses and um, then you can set up to nine different lenses with the focal lens maximum aperture and exposure meter coupling so you have the a AI lenses or non AI lens that you can change between. So if you have some old lenses, it's very easy to use these lenses because you don't have to do anything. Just um, save the different uh, lenses under the lens number one to nine. And so if you change the lens, just go to the setting, call the setting, and that's it. Um, so you can change it very easily and use your um, old lenses. All the other but all the other uh, menu points. Um, are the same location data you can use an uh, external GPS module and you also can use a wireless mobile adapter on the um, DF so there are no surprises in the menu the menu works exactly the same like um, the uh, other Nikon DSLR menus so what I 
talking before was the um, 3D level meter so let's have a look it's a little bit difficult but I try to um, get you a look if you are looking through the viewfinder usually you have the different uh, values here um, in the in the line under the screen you have the uh, you have the program mode and you have um, the um, shutter speed and aperture and if you press the front button so let's see we have first we have this one and if you press the front button you see there's a small sign in the middle and if you move the camera to the right or if you turn it to the left you see this small this small um, thing will move it's a little bit difficult to see but I, but I think you know you know what I want to show you um, the sign says if the camera is in level and another sign there are two small arrows and when they are together the camera is in this uh, direction perfectly um, leveled so you have the level uh, the 3d level meter um, in the uh, viewfinder yeah so what's else important at the um, DF I think I should show you the um, size the different size between a DF and a, a D610 I have a D610 here um, so you can see the different sizes of the camera so that's a comparison of uh, the size of the camera they are almost the same size the same weight there are not so many difference the main difference is that's for sure it's the look of the camera the DF looks a little bit more retro you see the surface of the camera it's a little bit uh, rough it's a little bit more rough like the old cameras was the the D610 is a little bit more smooth a little bit more rounded like the new cameras are um, the the word Nikon is in the on the DF is the old style on the D610 the new style um, so these are the main differences um, on the camera if you compare here the the um, side of the of the DF you see um, this and compare it to here this is almost the same the only difference what I said before is the flash button because the D610 has a built-in flash the DF doesn't have a built-in flash um, looking at the back side of the camera here is the DF and here is the 610 you see they are almost the same there are not so many difference the the buttons are a little bit have a little bit other um, system on the on the uh, DF and the dial on the back side the four-way dial is a little bit lower um, uh, it's, uh, yeah it's a little bit lower but um, it's it's almost the same the, the main difference is you have the live view function on the D6, D610 and you can change with a small lever between uh, photography and video mode and that's missing on the uh, DF that's what I said before no video mode on the uh, DF but you have the dial on the back side um, so it's it's almost the same so if you if you are used to a, to a, a Nikon digital um, camera I think it's very easy to change between uh, both cameras. One of the most important thing and where you see the difference best is on top of any look on top of the camera because here you see the differences between the between the number of dials and you see the size of the dials so the the, the DF is has these retro style the big dials and the big numbers um, you have uh, only this uh, small display on the uh, right side of the camera so there are the main differences also the um, shutter release button is a little bit uh, behind the grip and the DF on the 610 it's on the grip um, yeah and um, one of the most important things is here on the sorry on the D610 the big program dial where you have the auto mode scene mode um, and you one and you two the the the, the user modes um, that you don't have on the um, DF you only have I say it again M A S and P so there are no scene modes and nothing uh, to change on uh, the effects or something else here yeah, so these are the main differences between uh, both cameras um, it's very difficult to say um, 
what what uh, why why people love the camera or, or they don't love it I mean it's it's a personal thing and um, it's um, in, in my opinion it's a it's a real good deal for an icon to to put in a, in the market a retro style DSLR um, because um, the re the retro style as Fuji and Olympus did with the X series and the and the Pen EP5, um, the the customer love this stuff and the customer like to go back to the basics. They, there are there are a lot of customers who don't like the the the, the digital cameras with all the functions, hundreds of functions, endless menus, um, difficult to use. They like it back to the basics back. To, to easy using, you have the uh, aperture, you have the shutter speed, ISO setting, um, exposure compensation, and that's it. That's very easy to use, and you still have the good picture quality of a digital camera, and you have the the uh, live view mode. Um, so, yeah, I like the idea of an of an uh, retro style DSLR very much. But I know there are a lot of customers who say no. I want all the technique, all the stuff inside a camera when I pay so much money. Um, one thing I should mention: the um, DF is only uh, they will sell the DF only with uh, this lens with a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. Um, you won't get the body um, alone. You only get it in the set. And I think there's one point I miss a little bit because this is the same lens like the 50mm 1.8, the, the usual lens from uh, Nikon. It's a retro style lens. But in my opinion, they have uh, uh, put in um, an aperture ring where you can change the aperture by the ring manually. They didn't do this. The, the, the silver ring is um, just an optical gimmick, so it has no use, no function. Um, I think that's a pity because it would fit perfect to a retro style camera to have a lens with a manual aperture ring. Um, I, I think this would work uh, perfectly. But you still have the option to buy old lenses if you don't have them or if you have it in the stock. Um, you can use your old lenses with a, with a manual aperture ring. Yeah, so that's my uh, overview of the uh, Nikon DF. Um, I have the test on my internet page. I have lots of pictures on my Flickr account. Um, one thing I can show you that's the picture quality of the DF because this is a pre-serial model. Um, it's uh, one of the two cameras in Germany I've got here. There are only two DFs in Germany, pre-serial models you see here on the side on the underside of the camera it says Nikon sample so I'm not uh, allowed to make uh, picture quality tests with this camera but as soon as I get a sales uh, camera and, and, and production sample um, I will uh, make the picture quality test of the camera but it should be exactly the same picture quality like the uh, D4. Oh, one thing I've missed is the ISO range. Um, the ISO range goes from uh, 50 in low 1. You press the button here, you press the button here and then you turn the dial. It's a little bit difficult with one hand on top of the camera. Just give me a second. So, And now I can turn the dial and it goes from L1, low 1, that's mean 50, up to 12,800 H1 and high 4. So this is the uh, ISO setting of the um, DF. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed my review um, and it hope it gives you a little bit um, an overlook of the camera, of the design of the camera, the idea behind the camera um, and I hope you discuss it also controversial like in Germany. Um, um, yeah, I like this one very much. I like it very much um, it, because it gives photography a nice kick and um, it's not the same as everybody does, everybody or every manufacturer does. So um, yeah, it's very interesting. And it's very interesting was the, the, the big other camera brands uh, with C in the beginning does um, 
if they also bring out a retro style DSLR. I'm, I'm very interesting to see this in the next few weeks. So see me on my Flickr account, see lots of pictures of the camera. I have um, nice views of the dials and um, detailed views of the dials. Um, so um, see me on my Flickr account, see the pictures on my Flickr account. Uh, as I said before on my internet page, I uh, have the test of the DF, unfortunately only in German. Um, and if I have a final production sample, I will give you the picture quality also for the DF so you can compare the picture quality. Yeah, that's it for today. Thanks for watching me. Hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Come back in the next days. I have some more very interesting cameras in the next days. Um, so and uh, yeah, take some nice picture. Until now I say moin moin.